Hello and welcome to another edition of the Eternal Journey and that resolves and today I'm going to be very on brand and just play some Stones Scar. So there's a couple of new cards that we like. Of course Stones Scar Insignia is busted because it enables us basically just to have like Champion of Chaos fully powered like every single turn free. Like disclaimer, maybe not every single turn free but in the hands that you're going to keep, it's probably going to happen. Because now we've got 16 pieces that are just going to give us that. And that makes our life a lot easier. It's going to mean that we should be playing Vicious Harriman on 4. And also, like, Godan is kind of an easy stretch from there. I mean, you want to go 3, you might as well go for 5. To sort of pave the way for this, though, I have had to sort of go up the fire sigils. Um, perhaps in part to Kale's Persuader. So, Kale's Persuader, when I first saw this, I thought, Relic Weapon, Busted. I'm a big fan of this. It's a weapon. It's still kind of good though. So we put this on a unit. It's going to attack. But the world attack is going to deal 2 damage to the enemy. So there's a bit of evasion there. And you get to draw a fire sigil from your deck. So this should help you get up to the 5 you need for a godam. And then if you just put it on something like Vara. Like she's got lifesteal. It just deals an extra 2 damage to your opponent. You're going to gain extra 2 life. That's just really nice. And it can just keep some of your units like scaling up. So... Maybe your Semway Smuggler has just come out of shift and it's unblockable and it's ready to just do a bunch of damage to your opponent. So maybe I've gone a little bit too high by having three of them, but you know, I just want to try it out. Um, other than that, it's not too much different. We are just playing like a bunch of Flame Blasts, which are enabled by the Killer's Persuader Persuaders because Persuader is going to give you Fire Sigils, which is giving you power to put into play to make sure you can do a big Flame Blast. It's also burning your opponent along with like Torch to get your opponent closer to just being Flame Blast range. In terms of the market, so the Stone Scar Merchant is something I've always been waiting for because it means you get to play a Shadow mer a shadow Market. I think Shadow Markets are kind of better than Fire Markets, but you also get to play like Bar, which is really important. So I feel like you could put like a cookbook in here, but maybe it's a little bit too slow. Um, so because of that, we get to play Bar and Dark Turn in the same market without having that sort of overlap that we don't really want. Hideout Pistol is just like a two cost removal spell that is a little bit inconsistent, but we have got a lot of gunslingers, so we've got like we've got eight, we've got uh, 12, got 16-ish like gunslingers. Sadly, uh, Semway Smuggler is a smuggler, or a merchant rather, and not like a centaur gunslinger despite that uh, big staff to hold in. But look, he's with like, he's, he's definitely a gun in like hand or backpack. I don't know. Centaur's a wild one. But anyway, uh, I just want to try that out, just like as a removal spell. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, we'll probably figure that out in the first couple of games. If it doesn't work, we'll just be able to switch it over to like the cookbook, like I was saying. So because we're playing Godan, we're going to be able to warp units from top of our deck from time to time. So at that point, charge becomes more important, which means that our four drop of choice over the Vara is going to be Vicious Harriman because you can have turns where like you go down, your opponent's like, no, I'm able to for it because I had to kill Champion of the Chaos. They had to kill Vara. Now you've got to play Godan. Like they've not got the removal spell anymore, but you play go down at the top of your deck because vicious I remember. it's like a charge unit they're taking like 10 that's a lot and then you're a a flame blast killer persuader deck so this goes to be getting burnt out this is of course an aggro deck but it's also like a mid-range deck so it's a mid-range aggressive deck but let's take out ladder and see what it can actually do um don't think this is the final version don't think it's perfect but it's early days of a new set so all of us are wrong but we're putting the ideas out there get you playing with something seeing what you like So this one seems good. We've just got a 4-4 four, four Champion of Chaos. We'll just get to like Crest on turn 1. Make Agent Instigator. If Instigator gets dealt with, then we have problems because we probably can't play a Champion. But if things go smoothly, we're just playing a deck that is just like, oh no, when it comes to like big boys, we got some big boys. 3-3-5-5 three, three, five, five, and then like two five sixes. That's like, oh yes, we are aggressive. Problem with Crest here, I'm like, leave a power on top. Yeah, so I will keep that power on top because it pretty much guarantees us the Champion of Chaos. I don't want our opponents up to. They are Justice decks, so and this means that we're able to play in such a way um, that we're able to have a 3-3 free, free Champion on turn 3, and then we're able to attack as a 5-5, five, five, which is, like, massively different, really. So now they played Hojan, I kind of want some defense against that. So we're just going to play Champion, and I won't be attacking. I'll just block here. Um, our opponent's probably like Mono Justice, in which case they're probably kind of aggressive. Like the 4 3 here trade is good for us, I think. Yep, yeah, so we trade here. I want to play something, we make a 5 5, we attack. Like, 
our opponent is up lives because they had lifesteal, but we get to attack our opponent perhaps blocks. And then we get to play a Vara. Oh, actually. We can attack and... Well, just defines it, that's fine. I think in that case, we'll just torch this and play an instigator then. So plans have changed. Play this, kill this. I probably sort of on the back foot now. They've got more cards in hand than us. But we've got something in play. Okay, so Valky Captain here is probably just kind of easy to like make a sacrifice here. Loses for three, four. Well, you know, we've still got then two free power units in play versus like nothing. So we do need to be mindful of Siddhiti. Yeah. We've still got a point in because of Agi Point Escape. So our opponent's probably not doing that this turn. But the five cost of Valkyrie in like the 5x sort of cycle is definitely very important, let me tell you. So now our opponent's done this. Um, maybe they will just like block the Vara here, that seems fine. That lets us play a bigger Vara, we get an additional point into our opponent, and we get to play a 5-6, so that seems fine. We're at four Fire Sigils, so we're pretty close to being able to play Goda. Um, I can't remember hmm. I think it was a Reddit, I saw that, it was actually a video for that. Uh, it's a pretty interesting spell. So now our opponent's got this a melee, which is kind of a problem. We don't have like any Inco Bloods here. Just I'll keep yeah, hang fire on the insignia. Because then maybe we can just like surprise with Godan, but also got like a thing left for if you want to be doing something like I don't know, hide up pistol. So here as well. Upon attacks, we get to ping this with high women and then attack with the team. So let's go up hands kind of bad though. I'm not sure if they played the, the Sigil list, so we'll pay attention. Just looking at the OBS. I got this like bit here that keeps like fading out, which is kind of a bit of a nuisance. So, I put us playing with that card in hand, just don't worry. Uh, Zulta Loyalist. Okay. Well, that's certainly something. Um, we could just. So, we ping this, I thought there's not many chunks. Still point to our opponent. Get to attack. If we attack for five, we attack with all of this. Our opponent probably just blocks like the four two. I think this is fine. This doesn't seem great for us because our opponent's got like a pretty hefty board here. But we're at 34. Probably gets to decide which to attack with. Probably gonna go with the Amelia because it gets to it leaves something behind and this gets a plus one plus one. But our opponent's hand's kind of like garbage here, but we're open to drawing, like a, a Flame Blast just kills our opponent. Pretty sure Torch does as well. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so we've got Desecrate, which is kind of what we're looking for. So let's ping there. We know our opponent's only got like a Justice Sigil in hand, so we can Desecrate this. This will have Quick Draw, and then we should be able to just kill our opponent. Just even through the block, just through like the triggers of the instigator, and then just like charge. So it's pretty good. Oh, we might even masters with like our very own brand deck. Hmm. I can't remember the name of the nine friends list. Uh, so we do get to make our turn two play. Maybe these like quarries are just kind of nonsense, but I think we'll redraw this. I think we'll just do a little bit better. Oh, this is not better. Uh, do I want to go six oh not? Really? But I guess we are. Ah, this is kind of bad. We've got interaction, got something built to find uh, stuff to do. I promise on like a whole gen deck we seem kind of well set up uh, dealing with that. I guess there's Crest in here. I kind of want to keep like a power, but actually yeah, Varus fine. We are going to be like pretty four heavy, but the, the quarry should help us like find an additional power. If we need to start something, unlikely on turn one. Although if it is like time sigil initiate it probably will do, just so we don't have to face up like the the Tarkus on like turn two. Yeah. Hmm. It keeps things kinda of seeing. I'm not sure if it's like a hair 
over here that just keeps like moving over. It's like um, just I've set my chroma key wrong, but I'm still working on that. Also, it's not quite as bad as it looks. I think like a lot of the fog around it is just like you can see like the edge of the thing. Reversed image, yeah. Just need to move it like more in that direction. So I'm gonna lead with fire sigils. I felt they're important. Block the lead with crest. Okay. So we have been in Avara, but I feel like we just need like the snow science kick now, because this gives us the third power anyway. It also gives us like influence as well, so we're pretty well. I'll start initially from having those problems. It helps us to play Godan because it's the third. Also, like maybe playing like Avara this time would have been really good for us. So what's that point up to? Just Talon Peak Smuggler. I think this might just be like torch the thing so that we don't have to like deal with this. Okay, so we've got some way smuggler as well, which is good. So even though we discarded Devara, we can go and grab like a Dark Tank if we want. I could potentially just be like setting up a uh, hideout pistol at some point. Crimson Fireball. Well. So we could just blast this and then just like attack for five, but I think attack here. I think I will flame blast this just to kill it because the effect's really important. So our opponent's probably playing like Skycrag Dragons. Yep, so here's Eclipse Dragon. Rats. So they do get more power now. It's kind of a problem, but we'll ping the opponent for one. We'll just attack with the team here. Opponent's probably got like a torch. It means they get to kill us before the so sort of like the uh, war cry gets to happen. Multiple seeds could be a problem. I'll probably just have like six power every time. Ooh. Also, freeze perfect by wisdom the elders, which is spicy. So, I mean, I'm probably, probably never blocking this. Just tack in, just to keep things in move. It. Yeah. So. See what I'm, to to. I'm probably just going to set up. I've also got six, like, whatever, not much we can do about that. Okay, so this is Block Plus Torch. Hmm. Okay, so they've still got the fast speed. They've, they've still got the fast spell. So now, what I want to think about is, like, do we just go and get Hideout Pistol for the for this. We can also get the weapon that kills that, but it's, that's all it does. I think we're going to fetch a Dark Return. We'll play it. Get Dark Return. Uh, I'm not going to play it this turn, but if our opponent uses a Tarch to kill us, which they probably should do. i burn them all. Okay. It's expensive, but it makes sense to kind of have expensive, like, fast spells if you've got uh, Eclipse Dragon. Hmm... So basically like 9 power, or 10 now, like over a turn cycle. So if they mirror image yep, so that's what they do, it gets attackers quite a lot of damage actually. So not attacking with this one. I don't really want to get gunned down here. But I suppose we're sort of like on the hook for it. We'll attack this this turn for free. Then next turn we just get to ping it with high women. Um, is there anything remotely we want from here? I guess it might just be we're going to pick up some way smuggler like next turn. So opponent just gets to kill this, but we get to dark turn it, so it's not like the end of the world. I won't won't be getting to killables, which is kind of. Where I want to be. We're sort of, we're sort of a parity apart from our opponent's got like the better threat in play. So I probably can still have like interaction for this, but if not, let's get to attack them for four, get like our war cries on. And then I suspect now's the point where we we'll just check our market actually. Yeah, I think I'll just go and get merchant just because it gives us more options. We'll keep the power in hand just because, well, we're not quite at five anyway. There could be like a case where 
Ooh, it's a barrier. Right, right. Yeah, so now we'll play the banner. We'll play this. We're going to actually play it rather than shift it. And we're just going to grab the hideout pistol. So, which of these is more of a problem? Well, probably the barrier because the barrier can just like kill us very easily. And this way we get to gain six. Which plus our opponent like to be defensive now. Because our opponent's playing Skycrack, so a lot of their removal spells are going to be burn spells, which are generally good against two and three toughness units. But we might still pull it back. We're just missed masters now. Oh, I flip for that. Yeah, so we've made masters now, so I can stop playing these like generically boring good decks. I can start pissing around now. So I'm probably going to do one more game with this so that I can get onto that, because I'm pretty excited to play with um, the Duretti's Warp deck. This is just a straight practice one, not a Genev one. Um, I still need to get around to crafting like some of the pieces from the Genev one, but yeah, let's uh, do one more. Okay, so here's for the last one. Let's make it count. Uh, redraw this just because that's nonsense. Feels so awful. That is probably just a problem that will just happen because we're playing like seven fire sigils, uh, also like a bunch of like double shadows. Uh, I feel keep this. So we're quite a way away from two cards in our hand. We've got a triple fire and like a quad fire. But as the game progresses, this is kind of a late game spell anyway. This one, like we can't play four five anyway, so what's, what's the difference? So we are playing against Justice, so... And they played like Crown Witch Standard, so I'm just not going to play this for our favour. I'm going to Quarry. <sighs> That's a rough one, actually. Uh, I think the Fire Sigil is just too important. Yeah, so... Sorry, Merchant. Like, usually if I'm going to Quarry, I'm going to keep the Merchant. Just because it helps us go in here. If there's like another sort of dual influence, maybe I'll put it in here. I don't know. Well, in that case... Let's just play our gale over here. Uh, this leaves us kind of insulated from a lot of things. You can't get vanquished. That is generally it. Like, there was a lot of play with this card, which is what I enjoyed about the card, is that there was play with it. You got to decide, do I want to be... Okay, well, this is suspicious. You got to sort of decide, do you want to play around things like vanquish and torch? And this was usually yes, actually. Uh, so, just going to walk around. I've always got some sort of fast effect here. Maybe it's like a fire style, which is kind of was obvious anyway. If it's reinvigorated, that would get me. I would be surprised. But no, we've attacked for 10. Like, I probably got it for 2, we got it for 10. That is quite the swing. I also use like two crown standards, so later in the game, they might only have like one or two left. So we might have to worry about like lots of life gains. Also, if this becomes a problem, we can set up a removal spell on it with the virus favor. Yeah, so that's like the last crowd standard, unless I've got like one left after that. So late game, our parents' power draw is going to be a lot worse than like ours are, because ours sort of enable stuff still. So the opponent does. Right, they do have the option here to play a fast spell. I think they've got fire tower, but prompting it out. So this takes one damage, it gets plus two, plus two. It gets plus three, plus three, so it's up to six. Now it's got five left. But we don't really care too much. So there's the insignia. So I'm going to keep the insignia. And it might not make sense. Uh, but it enables us to like keep your own power. So we've got a massive flame blast coming. But also, let's play this, which means that like next turn we can get really aggressive. So I'm actually going to attack here. I've almost already used like the main use of this. If they were to trade here, um, they won't really gain that much life because they're still going to take deadly overwhelm damage. Yeah, so they're just making that trade. That's fine. Let's back to 18. Couldn't really have attacked with both because at that point, I feel like the opponent just like snap blocks the vicious highwayman, kills it. That's not really like a position that I wanted to live my life in. So now I'm happy to take these war cries. The war cries are going to count up. Uh oh, it's DT. That's a problem. Yeah, so we just need to keep it in a position now where we just like not let in our opponent like defend. Then next turn, like if we hit like a two drop on top of our deck with this, we're just feeling fantastic because most of them block this anyway. Yeah, so this card is actually really good. Um, play this against control deck. 
when I was playing with like Kuru yesterday, and they had to like expend like three or four cards, and then go into the market and get like a relic removal spell for this. And I just like I'd drawn four cards by this point. I just didn't care that they'd like all of us started that. So I just felt very ahead in that. So now my pro's gonna be kind of careful here. Like do you attack, probably yeah. But I don't get to attack him for five. Just eat this. I mean, maybe they've got a finest tower. It would make sense, like on that attack the other turn. Ah, oh, that's not what we wanted you. So, Defiance would be a bit of a nuisance. I'm not sure if this deck plays Defiance. I thought it's probably fine just like throw stuff in the way. Uh, just because it lets them keep drawing cards. So, they're basically drawing like two cards over a time turn cycle, which is a lot more than us. So, we need to kind of put the game away very quickly. Probably like drawing stuff, so they've maybe got like a Vanquisher's Blade or something. But we've still got like a good block here. Because even through combat tricks, we get to kill it. We do kind of want. So which one's our opponent silencing? So the 5-5. Five five. Yeah, that's fair, but it's just a little big girl, so. Kind of awkward with this. Uh, if our opponent's drawing extra cards, but it's just like Justice Sigils, then I'm fine with this. So ideally, off the top, would have just been like under one of these. Uh, it's not, well, that's fine. You know, we're just going to walk right here. Our opponent can double block this. That seems fine. Uh, they can just single block each to keep drawing cards, but I don't think they want to. I think they just want to like kill a thing. Uncertain what they grabbed with um, their merchant. Yeah, I don't know if we saw it. Yeah, so the cards are just more important to them. That's fine. Well, perhaps I'm going to play Power Up because we do have like Flame Blast, but also because I'm sort of tempted to do like the shuffle with Dark Return. Uh, so we like Dark Return back merchant. Like if we get Merchant, Merchant, we Dark Return, Dark Return, Never Merchant. Oh, 6-6, six, six, that's a big, a big dude right now. Gain a life, oh no. But Flame Blast is good here, so. Uh, we've got 9 damage here. So 15. So we can also just like, attack this, well, we can blow this for 9. I'll probably do it for 10, no, yeah, actually just 9. Uh, so that it beats like a finest hour or a chronic standard, then we just attack our opponent for nine, and then they don't get to draw a card. We've still got both our things in play. Yeah, I think that's better. Now they don't get to draw a card. That's good. So if we actually, if we just attack with both, with only one thing in play, yeah, I think this is better. Storm halt knife. Well, at least it. Oh, it doesn't actually even trade properly. Well, we're gonna crest because we do have warp units. Rip Knife Assassin, sorry bud, not quite it. So we're going to free, so we're live to Torch. And any of our charge units, we've only seen two of our eight charge units. Okay, so I probably just didn't have an answer for this. Okay, that's great. Well, there we go, back to the Okay, so board, there we have it. We mastered with uh, my very on-brand deck. So, always just been a big fan of Stone Scar, but since uh, like the actual Bandit Queen, had her wings clipped. We've not really been able to play for it much. And now, I'm just going to bore you all to death. This is like worse than Argent Part for you because Argent Part was one of my favourite factions that was left because, you know, of course, shadow based two faction decks was my favourite. But I think this is still good. Um, there's probably more new cards that we could try and play in this. Uh, the five cost dragon could be like, I don't know, sort of angle maybe instead of Godan or alongside Godan. I think Godan could be very good in. Rakano because you have a lot more charge there as well and I think that typically you do want to play Gordon with charge units because I mean, it basically ties you on the card like charge warp this is just like this is a burn spell unit that has got some other things that it does also like draw you a couple of cards so sadly we didn't get to see Caleb's Persuader in play but I think on the top of it I think this is probably actually just very good because it's just going to give you so much reach and it's just going to play into the type of gameplay that we want, which is where, you know, we like present threat, like just deal damage to our opponents, soften them up with like these really chunky threats, and kind of like a little bit of evasion as well with like Rip Rife Assassin. Like, Seven Way Smuggler can have evasion, but usually we just want to play the thing so we can attack. Uh, but this is kind of better against like, um, you can set this up so that you can attack a site with it. Or maybe if you know like a couple of turns down the line that your plan is just to put a Kale's Persuader on something. You probably want it to put it in like the unblockable unit. 
Like your blockable charge unit is a good. Actually, I'm not sure what they could charge. Yeah, it's just not unblockable, isn't it? It's not unblockable on charge. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, hmm, why would you need charge if you're in play for three turns? But yeah. Um, when I first actually heard about shift, I was just like, what even is this mechanic? It just didn't make sense. But you know, I've had a chance to play with it, it makes a lot more sense. It's sort of like similar to suspend in magic, but you get like sort of like other effects to happen. So if your unit's got, for example, while it's your shift well, your units have flying, right? You can shift it and that effect would still come into place. That's kinda nice. It's a lot of interesting design, especially for like future promos and stuff. But anyway, that's enough from me. I'm gonna go and play with uh, some nonsense. So I'll see you around. <laughs>